Have you ever had a job where you were just going through the motions, just trying to make it through each day so you could get that paycheck? You've been there, right? I know I have. One of the reasons you and I went into business is because we wanted to do more. We wanted to make a bigger impact. We wanted to serve God through our businesses, right? So how can you and I actually stay motivated to do what God is calling us to do in our businesses? The answer is to work with excellence. How can we do that? By working with consistency. So today, what I want to talk about is how you can be motivated in your business when you work with excellence that is actually fueled by being consistent. So what are we going to do? We're going to look at part of Ruth's story, you know, Ruth from the Bible, and we're going to show you how your devotion to God helps you to stay motivated to do what God is calling you to do. And I actually have five consistency practices that you can implement to keep you motivated each day in your business. Join me. Hey there, wise woman. This is Deneen TB, your Christian business growth strategist and clarity coach. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're liking the content. Today, I get to talk about one of my favorite women in the Bible, Ruth. We are going to talk about and use her story to show that devotion to God leads to being motivated to do your best, to pursue excellence by staying consistent in your business. So I hope you know that Ruth has an entire book dedicated to her in the Bible to tell her story. It tells you her entire story and it gives us a picture of how God redeems us through Jesus. However, we're not going to do the whole story. We're going to actually enter in the middle of Ruth's story where we see her pursuing excellence and being consistent as she works in the fields. She is our example of showing a good attitude and doing your best. A little background. So Ruth is the devoted daughter-in-law of Naomi. When Naomi's husband and her two sons die, one of which was Ruth's husband, she realized that she needed to return to Bethlehem for protection because the Jews protected their widows. Ruth, who is a Moabite, which means she is a descendant of Lot, is a foreigner. She's a beautiful foreigner. And she begs to return with Naomi because of her devotion, not only to her mother-in-law, but to also to her God. She loved God. So they arrive in Bethlehem at the beginning of what's called the spring harvest season. And Ruth begins to work in the fields, gleaning the leftover grain. She's working to really care for Naomi and herself. Now, gleaning was something that the Jewish people allowed orphans, foreigners, and widows to do. So Ruth's kind of in all those categories. What they were told to do was leave the corners of their fields unharvested so that the poor, the foreigners, the orphans, the widows could take that grain, take those corners for food. Now, it was work that probably she didn't want to do. It might have been what we call beneath her pay grade, but it was actually the work that was in front of her that she needed to do because it was the only way she and Naomi could survive. The work is hard and long, yet we don't see Ruth complaining and grumbling. In fact, she works hard every single day, picking up the leftovers in the field. And I'm not sure she probably wasn't the only person that was gleaning from the fields either. This situation, I feel, if you look at it, was probably fraught with dangers from the other people who were gleaning, from the actual har hired harvesters that were doing the work. I would think to be a woman in this environment had to be really difficult. Now, the field that Ruth ends up in belongs to Boaz, who is actually a relative of Naomi. It's a, I love how God just orchestrated everything so that Ruth would show up there because there she would be safe and she wouldn't suffer. You know, actually, Boaz notices her and asks about this beautiful woman that's working in the field. The foreman reports that she has a strong work ethic 
And this actually finds favor with Boaz. He is what we call an encouraging boss, a good boss. And he meets with her and he tells her to only glean from his fields. Don't bother to go to any other fields that you can stay here to stay behind the women so that she can be safe and to get all the water that she needs. Then she also instructs the foreman and the other people that work for him to give her extra food at lunch and to drop extra grain for her to be able to pick up. This reward is for really for her going beyond what was expected. She shows that the hard work can really set you apart. Now, Ruth stays through the entire harvest season working diligently in Boaz's field. There was a barley harvest and then a wheat harvest, and together these probably constituted about seven weeks worth of work. In all that time, Ruth's only concern is to really just continue working to take care of herself and Naomi, to be consistent in doing that. But, you know, Ruth is really smart. She's an intelligent woman. She's strong. She's loyal. And I believe that she was probably planning the next thing that she was going to do after the harvest. Now, I don't know if she had the same plan or the same thought as Naomi, but Naomi, she's kind of shrewd and she's courageous and she's persevering. And I think that she had lost some of that, but now it was kind of reawakened because she was watching Ruth. And she thought that Ruth could find favor with Boaz. Now, the story continues, and I have not included all of the details. You can read that in the Bible. And of course, you can read it here in my book as well. (laughs) Now, Boaz does identify Ruth as a woman worthy of his attention. Now, Ruth may seem like some kind of unimportant person who is just looking to survive, But God had other plans. If you know anything about this story, Boaz accepts Ruth by redeeming her in marriage. And she is redeemed through having children. In fact, she is the mother of Obed, who is the grandfather of King David. You know, the line of Jesus. So this just goes to show us that we can never overlook the importance of the work we have by the size of our bank accounts, by our popularity in the market, or by how our business is doing in the eyes of other people. God is actually looking at your heart, at your devotion to him, and shaping your character to be more like his son. So let's look a little deeper now into how to stay motivated through consistency in your own work in your business. First, consistency is not about obtaining quick results. It's about making incremental progress, improvements over time. You know, Ruth was in the harvest for seven weeks at least before she saw the fruits of her labor. How long have you been working to create a following? Write your content or develop your product and or services? Are you being patient? and staying consistent to see these results? You know, this requires you to actually keep track of your progress, the progress that you're making by actually logging it. My suggestion is to keep a gratitude journal and record one thing each day that you can be grateful for, that you learned during that day, that you record an opportunity that helped you move forward, or just the fact that you completed what you said you wanted to complete for that day. You actually checked it off. Second, consistency requires commitment on your part. You must commit to sustained effort of action over time. Again, we can look at Ruth. We can look to Ruth as an example of this. Commitment to God comes first. Are you committed to continuing if you know that God has called you into business? What does that look like for you in your day to day? Do you have a plan? Whether you are writing it out for what you're going to do the next day, you're writing that out the night before, or you're planning for a whole entire week at a time. You need to have a plan and you need to write it out. I cannot stress this enough. Give yourself a planner that works for you and use it. This sustained effort of action can only happen when you actually have actions to do. Your business can only move forward if you are committed to taking the action necessary to move it. Third, 
consistency is about building small, empowering habits. These rituals that you perform every single day that keep you focused on your highest priorities and your highest goals, the things you want to get done. Ruth's goal was to keep herself and Naomi alive. She had no choice. You, you have choices. Do you have a way to create habits in your life you know that will make you successful? Habits like blocking time each day for getting things done in your business. Habits for better Bible study time and prayer for your soul. Habits that keep you healthy with proper sleep and nutrition and exercise. These are things that you need to build into your day to day so that you have the stamina to stay consistent to do the things that God is calling you to do. Now, I have a tool to help you out to get you through this. It is called 20 Habits. Now, it's designed to help you create those habits and to stay consistent, whether they are new habits you're picking up or changing old habits. You do this by adding two new habits per month, all implemented until you have 20. I'll put that link down in the description so that you can get it. Fourth, consistency is not about repeating actions for the sake of getting things done. That's insanity. That's busyness. It is about progress, learning, growing, and adapting your actions so it leads to those incremental improvements that we talked about. You know, Ruth began to understand what the next step would need to be after the harvest to get to her next level. So what are you investing in so that you are continually growing in your faith, knowing more about God and growing your business by acquiring new skills? I've said this before. As an entrepreneur, a business owner, you must always be learning and adapting. There is no sure thing when it comes to business. No one thing that once you find it, it will make everything in your business perfect. It is really in all those little things, those things that you do daily where you will see progress. It is in not facing the day with fear that you will see success. My best way to start the day is by sitting with God and with my journal. Now, I don't journal in the traditional way where I write out my thoughts and my prayers and ideas and all that kind of stuff. I have a colorful way of journaling called praying in color. I will actually put a detailed video up here in the cards so that you can click on that and understand what praying in color could look like for you. It's a great way to have a focus each day to take new information and synthesize it into your business by asking God for wisdom. I love that my journal has a record of all the progress that I'm making. It's awesome. Now, the fifth and final thing we're going to talk about is that consistency means understanding that the greatest power lies in the present moment. What you decide to do right now. It means staying diligent and on top of the task at hand without losing any focus. Ruth had to be disciplined to show up every day to do the work so that she could eat. How are you disciplining yourself to show up in your business each moment with excellence? You know, procrastination is the enemy of consistency. Staying present in the moment means you have planned for the moment. You know what you want to do in the moment and you do the actions to complete it in the moment. There are so many tools that can help you stay consistent. I've already talked about the 20 habits tool that will help you to actually beat procrastination. But I also know that you may need to have accountability to help you stay motivated and consistent. Do you have people in your life that hold you accountable for your daily choices that you make in your faith and in your business? You know, we don't depend on our own ability to make it happen. We depend on the God that we serve to make it all work out for our benefit. And he gives us, he puts in front of us the resources that we need to do our best. Are you thinking to yourself, hmm, 
I think I need to have more consistency in my business and actually in my life. Then I would love for you to connect with me for a clarity conversation. We can chat about what God is showing you. Let me see if I'm the resource that he's put in front of you. Now, I'll put that link down in the description for you and you can schedule your call with me. Thanks for hanging out with me today, wise woman. Make sure to like this video and tell me down in the comments, how are you motivated today to be more consistent? This is Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing.